we got the keys to breaking down what the Gophers need to do to take home the dub versus Purdue at home for homecoming this weekend, and you're not going to want to miss out. Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. It's a daily show, daily Gophers content. Now we're in the heat of football season. So we're talking a whole lot of football, but basketball season is quickly approaching. Hockey season is quickly approaching. So we're going to have to get a couple episodes in there as well. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube and join the community. It's completely free. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, drop in the comments, tell us what you want to hear, tell us what you're excited about. Cheer on the Gophers. Let people know what you are excited about. Let people know the predictions you have for this game. But we're building the thing over there, and it is growing, so be sure to join and be a part of it. It's free. And then follow us wherever you get your podcasts at Locked On Golden Gophers. Now, today we are breaking down the matchup versus Purdue. We're talking about the key matchups. We're talking about the three keys to how the Gophers can come out with a victory and some success here and then also we're going to talk about important players for the Gophers on each side of the ball so let's jump in it's a lot of info but it's going to be that good stuff now right away we'll kick off the magic matchup breakdown Uh, the Gophers are favorites at home versus Purdue the spread is 12 and a half points currently it started at nine and it has been growing this is the same trend we saw with Michigan State now if you pick Minnesota they have to not only win but win by 13 points in order to cover now this line has been creeping up like I said so it's something to keep an eye on but if you feel like the Gophers are going to win now is the time to get in especially if you think they're going to win big. They've covered every game so far in the spread, so something to at least have in the back of your mind. Now, the score line has moved to 52 points. This is probably one of the most difficult score lines that the Gophers have had because it's difficult due to not knowing how the defense is going to neutralize the other team. Our defense is rock solid. Our defense is good, and we're going to get to that here in just a moment, but... I expected Michigan State to score a bit more. I wasn't expecting it to be a tight game. I I was expecting it to be about a touchdown to 10-point game. It was quite the shutout. Barely just missed the shutout with like 14 seconds left, and we all know how that went. But that's what I'm saying is you don't know. This this Gophers defense is good. It's really good. And there's going to be times where we give up touchdowns. We give up some yardage here and there. But it has been locked down turnkey so far, and so it's hard to bet the points because typically if you go under, you'll go under if you don't think the Gophers are going to allow very many points. But in most Big Ten games, you probably have some scoring. Even if the other team puts up 14, it helps you get towards that score line. That hasn't been the case thus far, but it could be at some point in time. So it's definitely difficult to pick the score line. I would stick to the spread. Now let's talk about The most impressive stats for the Gophers, and a lot of those come on defense. We are third in the entire nation in rush yards allowed with only 247. We're second in the nation in pass yards allowed with 504. Second in the nation in touchdowns allowed, I believe. That one I might have to double check, but we're first in the nation in total defense with only 751 total yards given up. Bama is the next closest with 805 yards. So over a 50 yard difference as far as first to second in total defense, second in scoring defense, and then first in third down conversions on defense and third down conversions on offense. But that's all, like majority of those, 90% of those were defensive stats. I'm telling you folks, this defense is one of the best in the nation and I'm ready to crown it. I'm ready to say we're right there as the best defense in the nation. Now people still got love for Bama because they got Will Anderson and they got some other studs out there. People still got love for Georgia. Again, 
People love the people down south, and you can't hate on them for it, but it can be a little much. It can be, you know, just based on historic events and not always what is happening. And this Gophers defense is what is happening current time, present time. So embrace it and respect it. This Gophers defense is one of the best, if not the best, in the nation. Now, flipping on the offensive side of ball, Mo Ibrahim is tied for second in the country in rush yards and in rushing touchdowns. He has a 13-game streak of 100-yard games going, and hopefully that can continue here against Purdue, whose defense isn't terribly great, but isn't poor either. So it's it's something of an improvement for the Pittsburgh, or Pittsburgh, Purdue defense. Now, Tanner Morgan is second in the nation in completion percentage and fourth in the nation in passing efficiency. Our offense has been top up there. Our defense has been top up there. It's thrilling. It's a great time to be a Gopher fan, and now is the time to get on board, row that boat, and tell your friends to get on board. Build something special here. It's going to be a good year, and it's something you're going to want to be a part of. Now, let's talk about the key matchups in this game. The first one I do want to point out is Aiden O'Connell versus our Gophers secondary. Our secondary is going to be huge this week. It's going to be something that we really need because this is an extremely pass-heavy team. They don't really rely on the ground game. If you listen to yesterday's show where we had two Purdue guests on, you heard about a couple of the names that maybe have been stepping up for the running game, especially Trey Mockaby, I believe. But the, the passing game is their bread and butter. The passing game is how they get it done, and the passing game has been how they stayed in games with Penn State, where they probably should have won if they didn't just give it up at the end of the game, and then you saw the same thing happen against Syracuse. Now, both of those teams are undefeated. They're still undefeated, so you can't even hate on those losses. Those are quality teams, and Purdue has been in the thick of it with each and every one of them. So, yes, our defense is elite, but don't just assume we're going to blow them out. It's probably going to be a close game if Aiden O'Connell plays. That is the key in this matchup, and Aiden O'Connell versus our secondary is going to be huge. It's going to be huge because... Hopefully, our team can give him fits, give him looks, and that comes from the front as well, but give him looks that make him hesitate, make him tentative, and really put the pressure, allow our pressure to get there, creating coverage sex, creating, getting him on the move. Like you learned yesterday with our friends from the Purdue side of things who broke down Aiden O'Connell for us, he is not a running quarterback. He is not someone that you want throwing on the move. He is very much a pocket passer. Now, the potential injury that he's looking at that has been rumored out there is that it is a rib injury, which would even more limit his mobility, but it also would have an impact on his passing. As Adam told us yesterday, who is a doctor in physical therapy and actually works in rehab with sports clients, with others outside of that, but he knows what he's talking about. He does injury analysis for uh, a fantasy football, a major fantasy football network, and most of the time when he's talking about these injuries on Sundays, he's been correct. I've followed him for years, and he knows what he's talking about. So listen to what he's saying when he's saying, you know, it could really hinder Aiden O'Connell even if he does play in the game. Now that's huge because it limits his ability. He wants to be in the pocket, but... He might struggle even so because of that injury. So it really should allow our secondary to be in tight coverage and really giving him fits. So that way, hopefully, their passing game is neutralized. If we can neutralize that passing game, this could be a blowout. This could be a stomping, a smashing, whatever you want to name it. If we can neutralize the passing game, there's little hope for Purdue. Now, moving to the second key matchup of the day, it's Charlie Jones versus Terrell Smith and Justin Wally. Again, talking about our secondary, but Charlie Jones is one of the best wide receivers in the entire conference. He has 533 receiving yards. He's been used on some rushing plays, but he is the focus and the center of this offensive passing attack. He can do it all. He's a route runner. He's got good hands. He's clean. He creates separation. So... He's going to have to create separation against Terrell Smith, who is one of the best man coverage DBs in the nation right now. He's been locking down. He's been showing out, and it's been consistent so far. Through fall camp, 
through spring ball and now through the early season. So tea time, I expect to see a lot of him on Charlie Jones, but he's not really, it's not like we travel our corners and you shadow him and try to shut him down with strictly tea time because our corners hold their own. So Justin Wally, who was a freshman All-American last year, has been holding his own this year. I believe he has two interceptions and a fumble recovery thus far. He is someone you can kind of put out there on an island and he'll hold his own, even though he's not as tall as someone like tea time. I believe Wally comes in at 5'10", 5, 5, I think he's 5'10", and then Justin Wally's about 6'1", 6'2", so a little bit of height difference, uh, but both of them hold their own, and both of them will be tasked with co- covering Charlie Jones in this passing game. If we can shut down Charlie Jones and make Aiden O'Connell pass to the other options, now there's been some other production. You've had Tyrone Tracy, you've had Payne Durham, who both have about 200 yards receiving on the year so far. But nothing compared to what Charlie Jones has put up with almost 600 yards so far this year. So if we can take away that one weapon and force Aiden O'Connell into other options and into, you know, worse opportunities... That's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. And taking away this passing game, like I said, is going to be key. Now, the third and final key matchup I want to talk about before we get to our key points of how the Gophers walk out with a victory is Jeff Brom versus Joe Rossi. It's going to be a chess match. It's going to be fun. It's going to be strategic. There's going to be different looks that Rossi is throwing at Jeff o- or Jeff Brom's uh, offensive system and offensive scheme. But Aiden O'Connell has seen a lot, and Joe Rossi is probably going to give him looks that he's never seen before. Different front coverages, different uh, different exotics. It really is going to be a chess match out there. And so give respect their way. Both have been good, great, if not at play calling, and this will not be an easy game. I want to stress that. If we can take away the passing game, yes, it could be a blowout, but there were some hints of ways to attack the Gophers defense in our last game, which we're going to talk about coming up next. First, we're going to talk about our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for football betting information this season. You can find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis every game you can find. And always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information and live betting with up to minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check out all your favorite games and events from NFL to college, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to Bet Online. Use your mobile device and learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so let's jump into the keys for the Gophers to walk out with a dub this weekend at homecoming. But first, thank you so much for listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers and making us your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about basketball. I was at the very first open practice for basketball to the media yesterday, and I've got some notes for you. I've got some some good things, some exciting things to talk about, so we're going to talk about that on tomorrow's show, but let's talk about the keys for Purdue first today. Now, work, we need to have key number one. Let me slow down. Let me back up. Let me... Take a breather. Key number one is that we need to work the offensive balance to keep a moderate defense, an okay defense, an all right defense on their heels. So we need that offensive balance. Now, so far, we've really been able to ground and pound and run the mess out of the ball and then allow the RPO game, the uh, play action game to thrive as we continue to dominate on the ground game. Now, last week in Michigan State, it was a little different, and we talked about it heading into the game, is that we needed to pass efficiently to open up the ground game. Michigan State's rush defense was one of the best in the nation last year, and they've had success this year as well, even missing Jacob Slade, who was missing last week. That being said, their run defense had been pretty nice and effective at stopping rushers as our friend Boatwagon said uh, on Twitter if you haven't checked it out and you tagged the podcast we mentioned last week that 
Michigan State hadn't allowed a 100-yard rusher in 16 consecutive games up until Mo Ibrahim broke it this past week. So they've had a good rushing defense, and they proved that. And how we countered that was having an efficient and a, a very good passing attack versus them where they couldn't stack the box, where they couldn't load up, where they couldn't really scheme to that way because we were picking them apart and they had to back off. And as soon as they started to back off is where we chipped away, we chunked away, and we started getting great rushing game yardage. Now, in this game, we kind of need a balance of the two different styles we've shown so far. We need to consistently be switching it up so that way we're keeping this defense on its heels because of this defense so far is 32nd in the nation in total yards given up tied with wisconsin but they're 45th in the nation in run defense and 46th in the nation in pass defense now that's not terrible they're both top 50 now it's also not amazing it's not something that's wowing you so you know you can get it done in both ways now what this team has been known to do is take away one key player and really focus on taking that player out and making you do it some other way now if i had to guess and what we heard yesterday from our friends on the purdue episode was that they're probably going to try to take away mo now that could mean trying to stack the box like was mentioned yesterday but I'm not sure that's exactly how you try to do it because we saw how Michigan State tried to do that and Tanner ended up Offensive Player of the Week with an 88% completion rate. So if you really want to go that route, we've shown on tape we can break that down. But he's going to try some way somehow to slow Mo down and stop the running game. So it's going to be switching it up so much that he doesn't know maybe he's putting himself in the wrong position calling the wrong defense calling a run defense on a a passing opportunity calling a pass defense on a running opportunity it's really going to be a chess match like i said and that's going to be key point number one is working that offensive balance and letting kirk shiraka really show out allow the passing game to thrive allow the rpo game to thrive the play action game to thrive and really keeping them on their heels and not knowing what's coming next Now, point number two is having a counter for the quick game. This is what I want to stress. In the third quarter of the Michigan State game, we saw, especially in that third quarter on the opening drive, that Michigan Michigan State was driving the field early. They had 12 plays for 70 yards to open the third quarter in a a four-and-a-half-minute drive, their only drive above two minutes the entire game. There were nine passing plays in this 12-play drive, seven of which were completed and six of which were between the four yards and 12 yards as far as passing distance. So many of these were back to back to back and they were moving and driving the ball with the quick game and the passing game really quick, like getting the ball out of Peyton Thorne's hands especially fast in order to not allow our secondary and the speed that we bring to catch up or to shut down these receivers. It was a lot of quick routes, a lot of quick game. Now that's something that Aiden O'Connell and Purdue have thrived in. That's a strength of Aiden O'Connell's game. So that is something that has been put on tape and you can bet your bottom dollar that they are going to try and attack in that manner, probably from the jump. You're going to see a lot of passing quick game in this Gophers matchup. So That's going to be a stressor in this week, and I am more than confident that Joe Rossi is going to have something in play and something in plan for that. But having a counter for that quick game is going to be massive. Otherwise, we could see a bunch of dink and dunk, a bunch of quick game plays to them scoring. So taking away that quick game, having a counter for it is going to be point number two and probably the most important point of the three keys. Now, the third key and the final key I like to give a little shout out to the show, uh, Cobra Kai or Karate Kid for those who watched the originals way back when. And don't get me wrong, me too. I, I loved it. And that was my show. But getting back to the point, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. That is point number three of what the Gophers need to do this weekend. We got to get on the board quick. We got to set the tone early, just like at Michigan State. And keep the energy at Huntington Bank Stadium alive and on fire. Right from the jump. We got to do this right from the jump. And being a part of that atmosphere, that craziness, is making sure that you're striping out. So I'm taking the time to at least say, check out where you're seating. There's things all over Twitter. All You can Google it. You can find it on the University of Minnesota site. 
where you're seating, what your section is, be sure you're wearing the right color shirt, whether that's maroon or whether that's gold, it's based on the section you're sitting in, so be sure to have the right color. It's gonna be a great thing for the gophers, setting the tone, setting the atmosphere. Imagine this, close your eyes and imagine this, picture this. You are walking out of a tunnel, you are a college football player, walking out of the opposing tunnel, and all you, you come out to a sea of gold and maroon and it's just consistent it's loud there's screaming there's booing probably because you're an opponent coming out of the tunnel and it's just overwhelming and then you look across the field and you see the gopher squad rowing back and forth ready to come out pj fleck takes off down the field and the team follows behind the crowd goes insane bonkers you can't tell me in your gut, you don't have a little intimidation. You don't have a little bit of, man, what did we just get ourselves into? That's the energy we need, that's the atmosphere we need, and that will help this team strike first, strike hard, and show no mercy, which we haven't shown all year. We've been running the score up, we've been putting points on the board, and we're gonna try and do that again versus Purdue, who has a passing attack. So they're gonna try to stay in the game with the passing, no matter how far along, no matter how big the score is. If the score is a big score and we're up by two touchdowns, they're clearly gonna pass the ball. But if we're up by three points, they're still gonna pass the ball. That is the strength and the heart of this team, so they're never out of it. So having that different atmosphere, having the Gophers take over quick, set the tone, have the energy and deflate any momentum that Purdue can have, that's going to be major in helping us win this game. This is not a team we should be overlooking. This is not a team that you should be like, oh, we're looking at Illinois, we're looking at Penn State because those are the teams that are, no. No, you're thinking about now. You're thinking about Purdue. You're thinking about going 1-0 and in the Purdue Championship Week. We got to take it one game at a time. It's exciting. Rank 21, but if we want to keep that ranking, we have to go game by game. We have to set the tone, and we have to stay in the now. This Gophers team is extremely composed, extremely mature, and that's what makes it exciting, and I know and I'm confident that we're not having any Bowling Green games this year. We're not having any terrible losses. We might have some scraps. We might lose a game scrapping it out but we are not going to fall apart that's the key so help the gophers set the tone and help them strike hard that's what i'm saying now we're going to talk about the players that have to step up this week to close out the show that's coming up next but first we have to talk about our friends over at linkedin jobs you know these days every potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You wanna be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. That's right, free, zero dollars, free 99 like I like to say. So be sure to check that out. Then you can just add your job onto the LinkedIn Jobs post and then put the purple hiring frame on your profile so others in your network can see that you're hiring and they can help suggest people that'll be a fit for your company and spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions will help you make it easier to focus on the right candidates and get the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one overall when it comes to delivered quality hires versus leading competitors. Uh, you wanna be sure, you know, finish the year out strong. Hiring a new crop of highly talented employees, that's starting next year off strong because the year is ending. It's going to be 2023 before we know it. I felt like we were still in summer. I looked at the date and it's almost October, folks. Saturday is October 1st. What? Like, the year is coming to a close, so be sure you have the right employees joining your team to kick off 2023 at its best year yet. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find qualified candidates for you to talk to faster and get to faster and be able to hire faster and quicker than ever. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college and post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they apply. All right, we're going to wrap this last part up with two players each side of the ball 
that we need to step up for this week in order for the Gophers to have good success and hopefully walk out with a dub. Now, the first player on offense we want to bring up is Daniel Jackson. He was off to a hot, hot start after the pitch count being removed and him allowing to play any any opportunity that presented itself he took advantage of last week. Having two touchdowns, he flashed potential all over the field, and he also looked like he had a little swagger. He looked like he had a chip on his shoulder. He had the confidence. He was like, I'm that guy. I know I can do this. And he showed that on the field. Now, as that continues to grow, you're going to love to see it. You're going to love to see. That's what Crab brought to this team. He brought more than just that, but that was an aspect that he brought that nobody else in that wide receiver room really brought. And it looks like Daniel Jackson is coming into his own on that, and you love to see it, and you hopefully see the success that follows with it. Now, I'm hoping to see that expanded confidence in this game. Player number two on the offense that I believe is going to be a key this week is actually Trey Potts. Now, I know Mo Ibrahim is our guy. I believe he's still going to be our guy, and I think he can and probably will crack 100 yet again. That being said, I think that success for Mo is going to come from Trey Potts because I think Coach Brown will really set out and sell out to try and stop Mo Ibrahim. But if Tanner plays like he did against Michigan State, I'm not sure he's going to be successful. And that being said, Trey Potts really needs to expose Purdue and their run defense to help the offensive attack and to really give a threat that this offense, they can't, the defense can't take off when this offense is on the field, when Mo is taking a breather, when Mo is, you know, getting some water real quick quick on the sidelines and coming back in. We've we've rotated Mo and Trey. We've given Trey opportunities. He gets about probably 12 to 15 opportunities a game. But Trey Potts capitalizing on those opportunities is going to open the field up for Mo because they, they're they going to try and sell out for Mo and then maybe lean back and think past when Trey's in the game. But if Trey starts gutting them up, if Trey Potts starts cutting them up, running them up, and giving them fits, they're not going to be able to just sell it for Mo. They might have to stay in a run defense. Then you start picking them apart in the passing. Then they have to, this is what I'm saying, you catch them on their heels, they don't know what to do, and then you open the field back up for Mo, who can take over and finish the game off. That's what we're hoping to see. That's probably the approach that we're going to have to look into as we move forward against Purdue. So Trey Potts will be big this weekend, I think. I think he's going to be big. Now, he might not have 100 yards, but if he can continually be a threat, it's going to be nice for both Mo and the offense. On the defensive side of all, the two guys that I want to stress are Terrell Smith. Tea time, he's been going against some of the best receivers on the teams that we've played thus far, but who have those guys been? The only one that really stands out is Jaden Reed. This week, he's going to have to go against Charlie Jones, who's one of the best receivers in the conference. Maybe outside of the Ohio State guys, he could be the best guy in the conference. That being said, T-Time will probably draw a lot of man coverage against Charlie Jones, and he'll need to show the ability that we've seen since camp, that we've seen since the early season, of shutting guys down, being a, being a, giving guys fits, and really being draped all over these guys, but not giving penalties either. He has been rock solid and very consistent. We're going to need that T-Time to step up again. Now, this team held Jalen Jaden Reed to four receptions for 21 yards, but there was one misplay opportunity that they had that could have been like a 50-yard touchdown for Michigan State to Jaden Reed if Peyton Thorne hadn't overthrown him. We can't give that type of look because Aiden O'Connell is probably not going to overthrow or miss. So we got to be sure to lock down. We got to be sure to be tight. And tea time is going to lead the charge on that front. Then the final player I want to talk about, the second player on defense, is Flip Dixon. Now, being said, we're going to focus on Charlie Jones. We're going to focus on taking him out of the game and giving fits to Aiden O'Connell and what he's able to see. But I think Payne Durham is probably going to get a decent amount of looks from this Purdue team in this game. So it's going to be Flip Dixon's job to neutralize Payne Durham. Flip Dixon is a mismatch when it comes to basically any team in the country because he lines up in the nickel. He lines up in the slot when it comes to a DB. He's shutting down or taking on a lot of running backs, a lot of tight ends, and they can't mess with the size. Tight ends, I don't care how big they are. Flip Dixon, dude's built. Dude looks like 
think of the Predator movie, uh, Alien versus Predator. He looks like the Predator as far as the build, and he's like ripped, and even the dreads, folks. Even the dreads got him looking that way. So he's a build. He is a dude. He is an athlete. <clears throat> That can match up with tight ends physically, and he has the speed to match up with slot receivers and running backs as well. So Flip Dixon neutralizing the short game, especially Payne Durham, that's going to be key because, like I said, they're going to try to play fast and quick, and Flip Dixon is going to help with taking some of those options away. So those are the four players, the four key players that I think need to step up in this game for us to have good success. That's going to do it for us on Lockdown Golden Gophers. I appreciate you listening. Let us know what you're liking down in the comments. Let us know what you want us to talk about moving forward in the comments. Tomorrow we're going to talk a little basketball as I visited the first open practice yesterday and I want to tell you what I saw. It's going to be exciting. It's a great time to be a Gopher fan for basketball, both men's and women's, for hockey, both men's and women's, and for football. So join on, join Gopher Nation. Listen to this pod each and every day, Monday through Friday. This is Kane Rob signing off. Have a good one. Grow the boat. Sky you Go Gophers.